Oh, damn it! Fuck damn sake. it! Joel, this is how I felt at uh, doing commentary at Nationals. Like, I was just afraid if I touch one thing, it's just going to all fall apart. You may not have been wrong. That was duct, duct taped together pretty fucking hard. <laughs> you're, getting to, you're getting to see how the sausage is made, Ben. Yeah. Hope that this makes the cut at some point here. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Curly Nation Season 5, Episode 2. Bottle of Green. Uh, that's a weird story, but <laughs> we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get get, get to it. Uh, on the show today, we got Ben Hoppy from he now he resides in Salt Lake. Yep. But uh, via Austin, via Stevens, Stevens Point. Point, via Minnesota, Green Bay. So, you forgot Green uh, Bay. Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, five and on Undercurler Extraordinaire does some writing for his own Substack, um, yep. and also the Crumbling News. So. Uh, we've got a fun conversation that goes through a lot of different to topics. But first of all, uh, we got our sp sponsors, Modus Financial. If you need a credit card pro processing, if you're taking money and you want to do it via credit card, Mason is your got a co contact. Modus Financial is your credit card processing and point of sale technology solution part partner. Whether you need a single credit card swipe swiper, POS, Equipment or entire integrated point of sale system, Modus Financial has your needs. ModusCC.com. Also, Endgame Curling. Croy makes a Croy makes a good broom. Uh, EndgameCurling.com. I've got one. I don't have you one have, yet. You have one yet, Craig? I'm waiting for. for I sell them. I'm yeah, waiting for Craig Croy to give me one. Yeah, because I'm cheap. Uh, Endgame Frugal? Curling. He's got handsome. Handsome. That's it. There you go. There you go. You nailed it. Uh, he's got a nice tra travel broom that bra breaks down pretty pretty well. Uh, he's got a non-slip silicone sleeve that goes with the room. The most economical broom head replacement out there. All you got to do is change out the fat fabric on the head. You keep the pla plastic, keep keep the pad. It works really well. Uh, e economical is you can just to throw it as much away and it's cheaper as well to replace your fat fabric which it's the start of season and you should change your fabric also change your gripper as well yes you know. uh i will say kind of on the on the uh end game stuff i've seen that travel broom in action and have swept with it it's it's legit it's like solid. if you we talked about it and he's an arena curler and talks about traveling a lot if you travel a lot and don't want to travel with a broom bag, that it is 100% the way to go. Like, you can sweep with it full on, and it's... It's it's not going to break on you. It's not going to break. It is very sturdy. I was very impressed with it um, when when I when I had a chance to, to handle it. I haven't so. swept with it, but I've put it together and felt... Uh, felt it off yeah. off the ice, and it does it does feel very strong. Yeah, so, yeah. That, uh, that's my that, solid product. Yeah, solid. Uh, WCF approved fat fabric as well as uh, other standard club fat fabric. So, endgamecurling.com and thanks to Croy for supporting our little curling podcast. Yeah. yeah. All right, what do we got to talk about this week, Joel? Uh, well, here's something. So our First episode was a little early because it was the club national championship, the Everest yeah. North American Curling Championship, brought to you by Everest Funerals Concierge. 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 Yeah. There we go. Good. Um, two point two million viewers on the U.S. TV tubes. This is dynamite. That is pretty good. Yeah, that's well, more. That's I shouldn't more say I thought. better than pretty good. That's yeah. I would not. I'm not sure. I'm sure part of it's the curling nation bump, uh, you know. Yeah, a lot of people. We definitely drove a lot of people to watch that. A lot uh, of people but... who weren't gonna watch that were listening <laughs> into our podcast and thought, you know, that that Randy Furby, maybe he's on. He seems like a solid yeah. guy who put together a solid event. I think I'm gonna watch this yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but I, I mean, I I don't know how they judge views, but I mean. I thought the production was good. I mm -hmm. watched 
I watched the women's event. I had something going that I was not able to watch the men's event. Um, but I thought I thought the women's event was well produced. I thought the you know the video quality was good. I I thought it was a good event. What do you think? They had a little different take on the on ice commentary where uh, Matt and Jen were both on the ice. Yeah, for they sure. Could, they could interact. They interacted a little bit more with the team playing. A little bit. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. They had a little more uh, laid back banter back and forth. Yeah, and I, I, and I think I think Randy alluded to some of those things when we had him on the show. I don't think he wanted to spill all the tea, and I don't. I mean, I don't think they. Also, they didn't really. They know didn't know. What the tea was I don't think be. they knew exactly what they were going to do either. Like it, it was kind of. He's like, well, it might be this, might be that. Like I think they talked through it, and maybe you know some practice stuff they they were like this will work this won't work but yeah i thought i thought it was good and and 2.2 million viewers you can't i mean i'd be surprised if there are some major sporting events in the u.s that don't get that so i, I think that's pretty good i thought it was over, overall like it was a good event like i'd watch it again maybe oh, not that sure. but yeah I'd... yeah i i think it would be worth watching again i mean it, it's um yeah it was it was a good event i like you said i think matt added something i think jen jones definitely added something let's talk about matt's sport coat matt sport you want to talk about Matt's oh sport coat? man that How thing you... was dynamite dude he yeah well yeah i mean he had the sport coat mm -hmm. he had the shoes that were gonna match it like he definitely came he came de dressed to impress yeah he we'll was he, he impressed me his, the, the, I he mean, doesn't impress me very often. He never impresses no. me on Monday night in league. He tries hard not no. to. Yeah, well, and, I, and I he's got the so. he has the flow going. I mean, he's he's was, yeah. Uh, yeah. I I think he did a good job. As much as we like to give Matt a hard time, uh, we're definitely going to give thought, Matt a hard time. Well, we and we will continue to. But yeah, um, sure. I think he, I I agree. I thought he did a pretty good job. Yeah, I thought he looked pretty good. Yeah. It's like, a, it's a like bigger head than it's like velvet has. or something. Yeah, it was velour. velour maybe maybe? might have been velour. No, we'll have to ask. I don't know. It, didn't, it didn't look velour. I know my velour. <laughs> <laughs> we do have it velour tracksuits. I have two. That's true. You have two. I, I only two. have one. Uh, it didn't look velour, but it did. It did look pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I think it's good. I think they should, uh, they should do try again. and feed off of that and do something again in on, in the old U.S. market. I would agree. If 2.2 million people watched it, I feel like that's going to, I don't know, raise some eyebrows, as they say, in the biz. I would agree. Uh, I thought... I don't know which biz that I think is, but... If they do it somewhere, I think they have to do it somewhere with a enthusiastic curling community because i yeah. think the live you i mean it wasn't a huge live crowd crowd i was gonna say audience which isn't which wasn't the right word but, but they cheered that, that, yeah that helped like they were knowledgeable they knew when to cheer when not to cheer you know things like that sure so i think that would be a benefit whether they choose to do it again in denver or you know move it around and, and find a different location sure um i think that would be a benefit yeah no, i get it all right next next story uh dale's becomes the official beer of u.s curling it is about damn time that there's an official beer of usa curling or you know the the u.s and just FYI, got we that sponsorship do not have an official beer of curling nation yet just saying yeah you no, know, we've got like four different kinds of beer on the table right mm -hmm. now in front of us. So. Um, where I like Dale's. It's all right. Their, yeah, uh, their pale ale is really good. Yeah, it's big out west. Uh, it's based out of Longmont. I was gonna just Colorado, I believe. I think I've had Dale's on a couple of occasions. It's mm -hmm. not in it's... my stable of go-to beers. Um, I. But I think it's great that we have one. Yeah, they. It's uh. Longmont, Loveland, one of those towns just north of Denver um, okay. is where it's based out of. Okay. And then they, I believe they have a couple breweries around the country. Um, okay. But, you know, the, the, the pale ale, it's, you know, it's a, I don't know if hearty is the right word, but, you know, it's a pretty substantial beer. Sure. But they also have a light beer if, 
you're into something a little lighter. Sure. Um, and, uh, but Oscar no. Blues Brewery in Longmont, Colorado. There you go. There you go. Way to go. Gold star for you today, correct? Gold star for me. Yep. Also brewed in uh, Austin, Texas and Brenvold, Brenvard, North Carolina. But nice. they started brewing in Colorado. Yeah. Nice. And they're, they're very, very popular in Colorado. Like in the mountains and all like every store has like all their different varieties yeah. but i think though the more important part is that we've got finally got a beer sponsor of some sort in this organization uh and as much as we want to make curling a seem serious when it's on tv yeah a very big part of this is sitting around and drinking a beer afterwards i 100 uh, agree and it's I mean, a connection that should have been made a long time how many, ago. How many beer commercials do you see when you watch an NFL game? How many beer commercials do you see when you watch, you know, MLB? It, m- multiples. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I I would agree with you that it, that it is very much a tradition with the sport, and it's nice to have an, an official beer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a cool sponsorship. Hopefully they can, good, you know, work out some deals with clubs where, you know, it's either maybe a, it's going to be a mutually beneficial thing where, you know, maybe they get some discounted pricing, but all of a sudden they're moving a lot more product. Yeah, for and, sure. And Because uh, curling clubs go through some good, good amounts of beer. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to see the Madison Curling Club get it on tap if we could just uh to support the fact that we've got a beer sponsor for our 100%. sport this mm-hmm. year yeah we'll have to see if our distrib if any of our distributors have it oh. we'll see if we can work something out get yeah. a volume discount well, there are can you can buy it in cans around here i don't know if mm-hmm. you sure. can get you it can on it tap uh or it by well, by the by the barrel i don't think i've ever seen it around in on tap on tap I, I think it would be too regional to have on tap here, yeah. but I I mean it's not to say you can't have it. Can't, it's it's yeah. yeah it's it's a distributor thing here, yeah. so we'll have to see if we can do it. Yeah. Uh, next mixed doubles worlds. I'm sorry, not mixed doubles. Mixed, mixed wor- worlds. Mixed, mixed world. Fours. Mixed fours, as it's called. Uh, Team USA did pretty well in the round robin. Went six and zero. Oh. And then, I would uh, say that's better than I, pretty I, I, well, I was Joel. Just say, I'd say, it's I'd say than that's well. pretty much perfect. Yeah, that's pretty close to it. Uh, <laughs> and then they lost in the quarterfinals, so um, too bad for them. Oh, yeah, congrats but, team, to them. Congrats team to them. Falco. Yeah, Team Falco. Dave Falco. Becca Wood. Lance Becca. Wheeler. Becca. Rebecca. I've heard it go both ways. I don't Sorry, know if it's I don't, Rebecca I don't know or Becca. Well enough. I, I don't either. Should have fact checked that. Yeah, yeah well, it's, her last name's Wood, and policy. her first name ends with Eka. Yeah, yep. Uh, Lance Wheeler and Lance Wheeler, Claire, Claire Morris. Morris. Yeah, yeah. Claire Morris Wheeler. I think it's just Morris. Just I don't, Morris. I, Got it. She's probably uh, you know Lance and, know. and Claire. Lance and Claire. <laughs> Lance and Claire. Uh, congratulations to them. They uh, rep- represent the U.S. well. So hundred percent. That was in Scotland. Yes. That wasn't Aberdeen. I think so. I believe so. I, I believe Aberdeen. Let's go with Aberdeen. That sounds yeah. that sounds accurate for the amount of fact checking we do on this show. Correct. Yeah. Um, I think I was in Aberdeen once. I believe it was. I believe yeah, it was. Think, I've heard of I the town before. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know how to say the word, so yeah. That's where it was. Congratulations. Um, the St. Paul Cashville. So there were some teams that qual- qualified. Uh, team Corey qualified for what, Joel? Nationals. Okay. Men's and women's Men's nationals. Men's and women's nationals. So four person. Uh, team Courtney Benson won. Uh, team Cousins won. Uh, they both won on the ladies' side. On the guy side. Uh, well, they both qualified. Only one team, team Benson, won. Team Benson, team Benson won. won the spiel, right? Courtney Benson yeah. won the spiel. Congratulations. When did she start going by Benson instead uh, of George? Years ago. Really? Yeah, she's been bent. I, I didn't know she took his I name right been, away because, like, I if I was her, I would have avoided taking his name. <laughs> well, um, you're not married to him, so I'm not married <laughs> to him for a reason, that for for several problem. reasons. <laughs> Derek, love you, buddy. 
Derek right. who? Derek George. <laughs> Derek, Derek George. <laughs> I think she, he should have taken her name. <laughs> I think they yeah. own George's liquor now. He might as well take yeah. her name. <laughs> All right. So anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Anyway, who um, else is on that team? Uh, Lexi I Lanigan. Lexi and Lanigan. Or, Eileen Sarmanen. Um, and, um, Olson. And Olson. Who curls? I think it's great that you were all using. We're using all their. Maiden, maiden names, names. Yeah. yeah. So Courtney George, Courtney Lexi, George. Lanigan, Lexi Lanigan, Eileen Sormanen. <laughs> Sormanen. The, uh, I, th- I believe who the last all one, have different names. I believe now. the last woman isn't married. Uh, Olson is her last name, and she curls out of Duluth, I believe. Okay. So. Yeah, uh, and then on the guy's side, Team Casper won the spiel. Daniel, Dan- friend, friend of the show. Uh, young man, Daniel, won Packer the spiel. fan. Uh, and they were already called. Qual- they were already qualified for na- nationals. So, okay. Uh, out of the spiel, team Dun- Dunham and team Sinnott on the men's side qualified for nationals. There you go. Okay. So Lance Wheeler is on team that. Dunham. Probably didn't play this weekend because he was in Scotland, and now he gets to go to nationals. Way to go, Lance. Uh, that's why they had a three-person texture on there. Very that, likely. That makes yeah. sense. Huh. Okay. Anyway, I didn't know he was on that team. Pretty sure. Yeah. Almost positive. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, la- last time we got Team Campbell qualified for the five and under nationals out of the Coyote Superhero Bonds Bonds Wheel. Do we know where that team's from? Uh, All they over. they had Colorado or they had uh, uh, Arizona shirts. Okay. So cool. uh, It looked like they were very good. Um, out of Arizona, so probably from like nice. Yuma then, huh? There you go. Tucson. Could could have been. Or maybe Phoenix. Okay. They had the Coyotes' uh, uh, logo on their shirts. All right, if I'll, you have I'll a guest room, if into... you have a guest room, email the show at curlingnation at curlingnews dot com. Curling... Uh, nope, it... that's not nope. right, Mike. What is it? Curling Nation at Curling Network, not Curling. Oh, Curling, Curling Nation Curling at Curling Network dot com. Curling, Curling News wouldn't. Curling News. That one's not going to go that's anywhere. Not what is it? it? Curling Nation at Curling, Curling Nation Net... at Curling Network dot yeah. com. Huh. I didn't know uh, email either. the show. Uh, I'd like been, to come out and golf. It's been five in March. years, Craig. That'd be great. Well, five, I screw it up every years. time. It's fine. <laughs> this isn't my part of the show. No, it's not. Your I part don't of talk show. about that. Apparently, it's not ours either. Uh, I'll say send Joel a message. Yeah, it, uh, it was like eighty degrees this. today, uh-huh. and we're it was. it's it's finger quotes curling season is unreal. Yeah, it's busy at the shop though. That's good. I was just gonna ask: Is the shop picking up? Shop is busy. Good. Uh, I had a great visit to the St. Paul Curling Club last week. Nice. Uh, selling my wares. Um, Very good. People what? are pumped for curling, even yeah. though it still feels like summer today. If there's is there one hot new product on the on the on the market this year? Uh, you know, there's a a gripper, a shoe from Balance Plus that came out last year. The 900 series okay. is taking off a bit this year. Ooh. All right. Um, everything's a little slow in the so U.S. Far. Oh, okay. uh, like it takes a year. It takes a year. Got yeah, it. like Got it. nothing okay. goes real gangbusters for at least first, a year. The first year. Okay. Um, Got it. How is your stock of grippers doing? Because second, because like, maybe like two years ago, you talked about. Oh. You had. Yeah, I had a I had, truckload of I had eight, five. I had like, like five, five years worth of grippers, and uh, I sold them in like a year. A year and a half. I bought a new gripper um, today. Uh, yeah, grippers are fine. We're stocked. We're, we got everything. Yeah. I think I don't think there's anything that we're out of. Um, pink grippers. I wanted a pink grippers. Except pink grippers, because Balance, Balance Post didn't Plus make any pink grippers this year. Sad. Oh. R.I.P. Pink so grippers. So if you want a pink gripper, you better be left-handed. Yes, I saw And that. only yeah. in certain sizes. Yep. Um, yep. I, was, I was sad that I couldn't... I. My wife used to work in a breast cancer lab, yeah. and I like to have the pink gripper, a little homage to her, and, sure. and a little just, you know, I throw it down, and I know it's always mine, and pick up the pink I gripper. I would get a pink gripper, but it, it would clash with, with my red shoes. Yeah, probably would. Yeah. But, uh, now, there are uh, some colored grippers from Olsen. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. all, a whole bunch of colors, they, including yeah. a couple new ones that they came out Ooh, with this year. Fancy. And those are moving pretty well. That's good. Uh, but my only concern about those is... They don't fit quite like the other brands do. So, okay. like, they might mm. fit a size 9 perfectly. Mm. 
of a certain kind of shoe and mm-hmm. then they like won't fit a nine and a half at all or something you know like Got it's it. Yeah. They're just a little trickier to fit, but I'm, there are some really snazzy colors, and if you don't mind the fact that you might spend $20 and then have to give your gripper to a friend because it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't fit your fit shoe, right. go ahead and invest in a Got it. Got fancy it. colored Got Olsen it. gripper. Um, partial of the Balance Plus ones. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you know, there's some new broom colors, but Ooh, nothing... Uh, Nothing are you gonna crazy have a new. new are you going to have a new custom? Oh, I got a new one. Yeah, I'm going to debut it next Monday. Oh, man. All right. There's only, I'm there's excited. about, there's about four or five of them, six of them that are out Sold there. Sold already? In the, yeah. In the wild? Yeah, out in the wild. Holy you haven't seen man. any yet, though. All but right. uh, no, it's a sharp new color. I saw it and I'm like, ooh, love I got to do it. I love it. I love it. All right. So, I got to do it. Yeah, because you, you, for those who don't know, you are one of, you are the largest. Hardline yeah. retailer in the U.S. in the world in the world, other than Hardline themselves, yes, other than Hardline themselves. Yeah. So you usually get a color run that's exclusive to Steve's Correct. every year. Yeah, mm. yeah. We pick some a, of them have been dynamite. We pick the, our own color every year. The hmm. if I, I mean, do they break the mold after you buy them? Like you can't buy them anywhere else, or you can't get them from anywhere else. You can't get them from. You can only get them from Steve's. us. We but, are able to reorder them in subsequent years of those same color schemes. But no one else can. But nobody else can. I thought the, hmm. was it last year that you had the black and yellow? It was, uh, last year was, was black and white. The year before, I believe, was the black and yellow. The black and yellow, I thought, is super sharp. If you have any of those left. The, those, are, those are super dope. The lime and the orange are our two best sellers. Really? As far as our sure. specialty colors. But okay. They've also been around the longest. So. Sure. I I thought the black and yellow looked sharp. But that's me. This Seeing year, I'm not going to tell you this year's per- color no, yet. I, I'm, I can't wait to see it on but Monday. But if you go on the website, you could probably check it out. I can't wait to see it on Monday. I'm not even going to look. All right. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you. Great. So, Thank uh you. otherwise, I don't know, you know, I mean there's a couple other little like new things or new colors of something or other, but uh just busy, you know. Cool. Club club Good. stocking up, people stocking up. Good. Love Everybody should get new grippers, like you yes. said. Whether yeah, they get them from me or somebody else, get a new gripper. Get a new and gripper. Your ice maker your will ice be maker, thank you. happy. Yeah. Probably well, need a new you. brush head too. As, I, yeah. as will your face, because you're not going to fall. Yeah. You get a new grippers. brush head. Yeah. Man, the amount of <laughs> shitty brush heads that I saw last week <laughs> when I was in St. Paul <laughs> really. <laughs> Leads me to realize that people need to replace their brush heads more in general. Yep. And, like, I'm not just saying this because I sell brush heads, but it's kind of like a toothbrush. Yeah. Like, after you go to the dentist and they give you a brand new toothbrush and then you brush your teeth with that one, like, the very first time you do it, you're like, holy cow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I this really so should have got a new toothbrush. Like That's actually doing something. Like, three months ago. I think. My teeth feel so much cleaner now. Like. Yeah. I feel like brush heads are kind last, of the same way. You don't realize year, how sh- bad they are until you get a new one. Last year playing, I'll call it one and a half times, because I played Monday League, mm-hmm. Monday Monday Fours League with you, and then I played mixed doubles. Mm-hmm. So I count that as kind of a half, because I, sure. I don't sweep as many rocks. Plus you sweep like crap when you do. Well... Let's not don't muddle up my conversation with oh, facts. Oh my bad. All right. It's uh, not <laughs> um, but I think I go about eight weeks, and then I get a new brush head. So so I go about play, playing twelve league, games. Playing league, I I call it about twelve games. I yeah. think you can go longer than that. You can go a little longer but... than that, but I. I, like there, to, I mean, you can tell a big difference after oh, your 12 games, 100%. but like, I don't think you're done after 12. No, I don't, I don't but, think so. I mean, you could. Uh, yeah, I think I think a very very general rule of thumb is if you play once a week, you need one a season. Sure. Uh, and that's kind of minimum. Yeah. Um, and if you're playing, you know, two three times a week, or you play throw some bond spiels in there, you're really gonna want to get a second or a third. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree, and I I think it's a minimal investment. But. It is cheap. Mm-hmm. Like if you think about golf balls, yeah, you know, I mean, you spend uh, what's a sleeve of balls? I mean, cost if you're if you're around, playing, you know, like I mean, if you're playing, you know, I'm Pro lo- V One, losing like twenty bucks yeah. worth of balls every 
Right. Right. So if, well, if you're yeah. a, if you're a decent golfer and you're playing something like a Pro V one, that's that's a three to four dollar ball. And if you lose and you two use a couple, if you lose two around, that's six to nine bucks yeah I mean, and then you know, you know even if you don't you lose them like by the time you play a whole round with them they're probably yeah you're swapping it out they're not as, one, they're not so. very good balls anymore yeah. i lose the range, range ball so i really don't care yeah, you, right you don't play golf very much that's, that's fine so that's true <laughs> uh so yeah get, what else we gotta talk in. about uh, that, that's plus. all I got on. The there list. is all kinds of stuff going on in Canada, but I don't yep. think we want to get into that, do we? I don't. I don't. Well, well, there's Brand, the Brad, Go- Brad Gushu got rid of a player and got botcher. Yeah, yeah. The, that's the fascinating, Go- but I don't want to talk about I that very bad today. Well, they didn't really no. say much about it. It was just I don't. It was. I, it's that that they one. Said, uh, they said all the polite things about about it. We right. Don't really know, we don't really know the real story yeah. yet. Yeah. That so, one, that one was a head scratcher to me. Um, Cooey got a new Cooey player. Got of, Cooey got rid of a player and got a new player. Poached him off a team. So Jack Jack Oche was out and got um, uh, yeah that guy drawing a, drawing a blank on his name. Looks like Jason Momoa, the dude but, who skipped the team from Alberta last yeah, year. Yeah, whatever 100%. his name was. I can't. I'm I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's stuff going on in Canada, but it's not. It's not our wheelhouse, really. Not today. Like, not today. No. It's still been too um, warm to be, like. Yeah, you know, I I played golf on following curling. I played golf yesterday. In it was eighty degrees today. Shorts and a t-shirt. I wore flip flops today well, out I of principle. Shorts and a golf shirt and playing a t-shirt. Huh. Not that savage, but. My building on camp camp campus switched over from air to heat. And uh, it was. And then back. <laughs> no, it was super hot at work today. Huh. That used when I had to work in our office. That was always the problem too. Is like if you if you go from cold to hot or hot to cold when the season started to change. There'd like be a couple days where there, there'd like, definitely be about a a week to yeah a couple days to a week where you're just sweating or mm-hmm. freezing one of the two. So um, uh, that's it, man. Do I know. Halloween spiel's yeah. coming up. I'll Halloween be busy spiel, all Halloween weekend. Spiel. That's I like, will not be there. Yeah. No, nope. oh, that's fine. Nope. Busy. My wife's my wife's playing. Is she currently? Yeah. Hey, Somebody come canceled. Down? I'll be down there at some point, but I yeah. have to work at the shop and I have to oh, right. cart sure. kids around cart all weekend around. and soccer games and crap yeah. because she's busy curling and having fun. Hear that. But no, she's playing my sister's coming. They oh! somebody canceled. Oh, nice. Somebody that my sister knows, half of their team canceled. So my sister decided she'd fill in and got my wife to fill in. Nice. So well, they're, be they're fun. playing. Pretty good fun. Pick up for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. they got. Decent. They have some pretty cool, like costumes. prototypes for costumes. Ooh. I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but it seems good. Nice. Um, you guys have a plan for costumes yet? It's how this isn't going to come up. We're not going to have another uh, episode before Halloween. I I have multiple costumes. Let me give I, you some. I am uh, our our team our team costume is we're going to be the Adams family. I'm going to be cousin It. You're playing this weekend. Yeah, I'm playing this weekend. With Well, who? I'm 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 half running the spiel. I help I help the chairs run the spiel. Okay. Well, I've done that the last I don't know, half dozen years. All right. And who are you curling with? Uh Brian Coop. I know him. Miranda Hoffman. He's my cousin. She's my cousin-in-law. Uh, Laura Small Ros- world. This. Laura Rossler Delaney. She's also related to me yeah. somehow. <laughs> I believe Laura Rossler Delaney's daughter, Ava. Okay. Uh, also would be related to me somehow. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, there will probably be multiple people, subs, because inevitably two or three of us have to do shit for the spiel. Okay. So uh, mm-hmm. there might be subs in there somewhere. All right. I, I have no idea. Maybe a mini coop. Who would also be sure related to also you. be related yeah. to me? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Laura's second like Laura's remote. mom is like second cousins with my dad or something. I don't know something yeah. weird like that. Uh, so yeah, okay. Um, I'm so we're gonna. I think Saturday night we we've got Adam's family theme. Okay. Um, I don't know what everybody's gonna be. I think. Are you? Uh, I'm gonna be cousin whole, it. Oh, I was just gonna try and guess yeah, if I'm you're gonna be, gonna the, be ugliest, it or... the ugliest possible character. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I also have a pickle costume that I'm going to wear around the around the uh, club at some point on okay. the weekend. Pickles are bullshit. Um, I well, 
<laughs> We're getting I've, to pickle I've talk. never heard pickles referred <laughs> to as bullshit before. I don't like pickles. I don't like pickles. any pickles. You're not, a big, just, you're not no. a big vegetable fan in general. Some I vegetables, feel like. yes, but yeah. like pickled ones, yeah. like got it. No, got it. Uh, so I'm gonna be a pickle, <laughs> and uh, I also have a, a super sweet uh, bomber jacket that uh, my friend Liza made for us for our space spiel out in Denver. Uh, so I'll probably throw that on and some aviators and wear that around the club a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, over the weekend. And Do you have any costume ideas, Joel? Uh, I'm not going. To. Joel, Joel well, won't just be there in general, all. you don't have any costume uh, plans. No. Joel's Joel's gonna be Joel's my, gonna dress as a new dad. Maybe my wife is yeah. super pre- pregnant, so like I cannot yeah. risk the yeah. COVID. Yeah. I've got no. my shots. Well, no. you could go to like the hospital wearing your costume if Ooh. it happened. That would be outstanding. Makes her for some great pictures. You want my pickle costume? <laughs> <laughs> Pickles are bullshit, Mike. Pickles are bull- bullshit, Mike. I don't want it. All right. I don't know. You got a costume? You gonna, I am. Uh, I I lucked out. I lucked into a costume yeah. potentially for the rest of my life. <laughs> the uh, Turkish. Pistol shooter from the oh, Summer you Olympics. You do look like the Turkish pistol shooter. I look yeah. very, very, very similar to Are this gray, man. Gray, Damn. Gray I've got gray hair. Yes, I'm yeah, gray enough. Gray I've got glasses. Oh, man, that's outstanding. my kids have, like, these big Nerf guns a, a that I can, of, like, yeah. use. And I've got, he won a silver medal. Some, I've got silver medals at silver home. Silver medals, silver medals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> going on here? Not from the Olympics, but I've got silver medals. Like Damn. whatever, I can. Oh yeah, buddy. I can whip out a T-shirt and yeah. write the write word Turkey, Turkey, on, Turkey it. Yeah. on it, and Heck I am yeah. gonna be. Dude, I'm gonna be set. That. But love I that look. Life journey for you. That's you I got. I got uh, a minimum a of a half a dozen how, how messages. A full of booze or maybe, ooh. maybe, yeah. Ooh, that's a pro mm-hmm. move. There you go. I got a Squirt minimum of a alert. half a That's dozen death. different <laughs> messages during the Olympics. Like, have you ever been mistaken for this guy? Or has anybody ever seen Craig and this guy in the same room at the same time? <laughs> um, uh, so. You should find that guy and start a life of crime. There you go. You Maybe can, I should. I, yeah. I can, honestly felt like I should reach out to him and ask him if he wanted to swap some jerseys from, you know, so I, could, I could send him an old... And he could go yeah. for Halloween. He could he go, go as Craig, Craig Brown, Brown, a random curler from the United <laughs> States who looks just like him. That's um, awesome. Do they have Halloween in tur- Turkey? I feel like they should have Halloween in Turkey if they don't. I don't know. I was told we didn't have to do any Halloween mm. research before the show, so I didn't. I, didn't I do don't do. I didn't do any research. Do they celebrate Halloween in Turkey? From TurkishGlass.com. Oh, come on. Yeah. That sucks. That's Alexa, bullshit. I mean, in case you couldn't hear, Joel asked Alexa if uh, they can celebrate turkey in, in Tur- I don't in think they did. Halloween in Turkey, and they don't. So she didn't think they did. Lame. Huh. All right, Turkey, get your act together. Start right. celebrating Halloween so uh, this <laughs> Turkish shooter fella can go as Craig Brown next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't That's know. It. I That's mean, it's – yeah. It's. I mean, it's curling season, but it doesn't feel like curling season. I think we're all wearing shorts. Are you wearing? You know, you have a short sleeve t-shirt I have on. A short sleeve t-shirt. But, yeah, but I Craig and I are wearing flip-flops. shorts. I just took my flip flops off before I came here. So. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get into it this year. Uh, thanks for tuning back in. Uh, we'll get to our yep. interview. Yep. Here. Yeah. Here's Ben. Let's get to it. All right, everybody. We got a great guest today. He's. Maybe our least decorated guest, but uh, he is very enthusiastic about the game of curling. Uh, he is joining us. He is, I think, freshly graduated from the five and under sect. We're going to find out for sure. He'll give us a timeline. He's doing some writing for Curling News. I'm excited to have him on. Excited to get this POV on the show. Ben Hoppy. Hoppy, right? You got it. Nailed it. All right. Ben Hoppy, welcome to the program. How are you doing today, buddy? 
I am doing great. I was supposed to, well, normally I curl uh, this week, this night of the week, but the stupid speed skaters took over the rink for the next three weeks. So the we've got no curling for three weeks now. are taking over the rink. So you are curling on non-dedicated oh, ice, obviously. Yeah, I'm an, uh, I'm an arena curler. I I'm a, used to be dedicated. Now I'm arena. I've gone the wrong way down the You've spectrum. Gone so. the wrong way. Where, where are you curling nowadays? I think you just moved, right? Yeah, I just moved to Salt Lake City, so I'm curling out of the uh, the Utah Olympic Oval or Oval Curling Club. I don't think they can say Olympic Oval anymore, but uh, so the the Utah Oval. So we got speed skating, long track, short track, all around us. Awesome. So you're in the middle, or the curling sheets are in the middle, then the speed skaters go like all around the the outside. Yep. So the long track is on the outside. Usually they just have like open skate when we're there, um, and then we've got. The short track, we play on the short track rink. And then the other rink is actually the temporary home of the Utah Hockey Club. Um, that's their practice facility for the next like year or two while they build up that, that facility. So nice. And that's in Park City, correct? Uh, no, we're actually in, uh, in like the Salt Lake, in the Valley. Uh, technically it's Kearns, but it's just west of the Salt Lake City metro. Park City has an arena curling club. And then about an hour north of us is Ogden. They have an arena club as well. So we've got three arena clubs all pretty close together. Is there an oval in Park City as well? Or is that, am I just making that up in my own head? Might be making that up in your own head. Okay, got it. Congratulations. Well, you know. So Derek Para is the guy who runs your place? Uh, that's a great question. Um, okay. I th that name sounds familiar. Um. Kara is the main person that like does the curling stuff here. So I don't know who she works with at like the oval itself. Okay. Um, but that's, we, I, if I have questions about the facility stuff, I, I go to Kara. Okay. With this, this guy, he was a speed skating hero. If there's yeah. such a thing I mean, in I, the U S and, gold medalist, uh, I think, huh? He was a gold medalist, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 I believe Probably so. A couple times maybe. He won, he won medals yeah. and nice. Uh, but he was in charge of buying curling brooms for the club that he is, the oh, building that he oversees. Got it. And I don't, I think he thought he was calling me anonymously. Like he had no, I wasn't going to have any idea who he was. Uh-huh. And like the week before or two weeks before he had a, like a 19 year record Maybe world record. Okay. Uh, that had just been broken. Oh, man. That, and, and that's an eternity in speed skating. That is an eternity. And... Is that pre-clap? No. Might, that might have been right after those clap skates came out. And, uh... But then I, like, just, you know, was refer communicating back and forth with him about curling brooms. And then I yeah. just threw in a, sorry about your record, but that was a hell of a run you had. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, now he's, now, I think he felt like he was, I don't know, it just seemed, he wasn't ready for some kind of, like, conversation about him. Like, yeah. I think he just Probably thought he was Joe Blow. Still pissed off about it. And he like, might have been, like, but. Thanks for bringing that up, Greg. Yeah. Way to ruin his day. Jeez. Yeah. I just rambled for too long. Sorry. How That's long great. have you been in Salt Lake? Uh, so I just got here this uh, this summer, so I've only been here for a few months now. So um, before here, I was I was in Austin for four years. Uh, so I curled out of Lone Star Curling Club in Austin for like pandemic till this year. Okay, got it. And that's that's an arena club as well, right? They're trying. Yeah, that's an arena. Yeah, go. Yeah, that's a, it's an arena club. We actually had uh, ten months of dedicated ice in in Austin uh, back in twenty. Going in the Olympic year, 2021 into 2022, yep. um, some folks came in, basically rented out like half of the building. So just the the one side. And so we had dedicated curling ice for 10 months. Um, and then it financial, uh, financially didn't work. It, that's what, yeah, that's what uh, we were told. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. Um, <laughs> Decisions were made. Decisions Got it. were made, Got it. Uh, and so they I, dropped out after ten months. Unfortunately, I think I I think we talked about this on the show. Like I vaguely remember seeing some video about when they were going to have this dedicated ice, and there's like maybe twenty people in a room, 
and they announce it and they're like yay and it was I like was in that, it was the I saddest was room it was the saddest like promotional video promote no it's just like the saddest celebration that there was going to be dedicated curling ice I was in, <laughs> if it if it's the same video I was in that room trying my best to contain myself cuz yeah. like I had been yelling at well not yelling at but I had been very vehemently telling the board like why do we have this garbage ice like there has to be something we can do and so they said well show up for this thing before league uh, on Tuesday and and you might find some interesting information nice. so they share that and I I did my best cuz I knew that there was video recording so I was trying not to be like that guy and obviously not everybody else must have had that same thought you, you didn't so. want to become a meme <laughs> no i mean that's gonna happen at some point eventually we had uh curl hand luke out of our club anyways so i would find myself on random tiktoks and instagrams and anything else so got it um i already i was well on my way to becoming a curling meme as it was i didn't need fair. to accelerate that fair also that's making sure that uh making your opinion known to the board is a very good way to get yourself volunteered for stuff. Yeah. So be careful about, about, about that. Bring it on. I'm not afraid <laughs> to say no if I need to. <laughs> All right. If I okay. if you're telling me I have to volunteer for something related to dedicated ice, now having curled on arena ice for the past like five years, cool. Let let me volunteer for things related to dedicated ice. I'll, Got I'll it. do it. That's Got fine. it. I love that. I love that passion. That's, that's why I wanted to have Ben on because he's very passionate. Um, so did you, we were, we were chatting before the show, uh, you went to school in Stevens Point. Did you curl at all there? Like, did you learn to curl in Stevens Point or no? Nope. Nope. I grew up driving. I, so I grew up just on the Western side of the state. Uh, so I actually grew up driving past Centerville Curling Club almost every day to go to school. Did you know um, it was Centerville Curling Club? I just knew, oh, hey, that's a place I think that Olympian has like curled out of there before. And that's like the extent of it got it and so i grew up like that was 30 minutes away from my house and never really thought twice about actually like trying it um yeah. had nothing no idea when i was in stevens point and it wasn't until uh the 2018 olympics that I, and I was living in green bay that i was like i wonder if there's curling near me and we had just bought a house mm -hmm. um on south oneida street so i was like curling Whoa. near me and green bay curling club one yeah, mile like away four blocks um, away yeah which, Yep, it was a two-minute drive. Like that was that was the good life right there. There you go. Where did you grow up? I grew up just outside of Winona, Minnesota. Were you in in Minnesota? Or were you on the Wisconsin side? I was on the Minnesota side, but I went to high school in Wisconsin. Where did you, you go? Get, to high you go. You went to Get High, didn't you? Did you go to Gay Electric? I did. I did not go to Get High. Oh, I come went on. to. Uh, I went to Luther High. So I was the one that was getting destroyed by Get High in all sports. <laughs> Got it. Where's Luther High? On Alaska. Okay. All it's right. right down the street from Alaska High School. So. Got it. My my folks are from Gelsville, so I'm yep. familiar with Had that plenty. neighborhood. Good chats with your dad about him sneaking into into the club there from time oh, to yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, told, he, was... told, he told us that story. I think. I nice. think he was a troublemaker. Yep. The reason yeah. the reason I ask if you knew that it was a curling club uh, many years ago. Joel and I were playing, uh, we were playing down and we stayed with my aunt and uncle and, uh, we were in Wapaka and my uncle came to watch his curl one night and he comes into the curling club and he's like, he, he was a firefighter and in, like the fire department is literally across the street from the curling club in Wapaka. And he comes into the curling club and he goes, I have probably been to that fire department no less than 300 times in my life he goes i never knew this building was a curling club <laughs> he goes i thought it was a municipal building or you know some some type of storage <laughs> building he's like no clue it was a curling club i've probably been in that in that fire station 300 times over you know 30 years or whatever never knew this was a never curling knew club. it's like well, well from what i understand like, no steven's point was like that right like Stevens Point was like that little two sheeter at the golf course or something, and I like I think that's why I had no idea of it when I was in college because it was this, from what I understand, a place with like a slanted roof and like just a little two sheeter that nobody really knew much about. At yeah, least outside of the club. Stevens Point, you gotta know it's there. Yeah. Um, but I think it is. 
it w well was first when you drive in the you gotta drive pat past it first to get to the golf, golf course yeah, yeah so, but it wasn't but it, but it, was, it wasn't, wasn't really no you wouldn't know it, yeah, was, it was, there. was tucked in there yeah. if, it, if you're driving past to go to the golf course you're probably like well, that's probably where they put the lawnmowers and stuff cart cool. shed yeah cart, cart barn yeah yeah, if they had this facility when I was in school, I, I there was a I wouldn't be surprised if I would have gone to check it out. Oh yeah, new, facility now, great. I love I love the new curling club there in Stevens Point. It's awesome. Okay, so you started curling when you randomly looked it up, living in Green Bay, and then yep. you cur curled for a few years there before you moved to Texas. Yep, I curled there for started in fall 2018 in Green Bay, um, and then curled up until like and then the pandemic hit. Um, so that kind of shut down the leagues in Green Bay. And at that same time, my wife had gotten a job offer for Austin. So one of the first things I did was like, do they have curling in Austin? I saw they did. I'm like, all right, if you want to go, we can go. We're good. I, I have, I have a thing, I have a thing I can do and people I like have something in common with. So, um, so I looked up to see if they had it, they did. And that was that. And then I got my taste first taste of arena curling. All right. Uh, was ahead. it hard to go from dedicated ice to arena ice or have you come to like have you come to maybe not accept it but come to uh, terms i'll never i'll never accept it i will never <laughs> i will always get anybody who's played with me knows that when you have a night where it's just like s curves or we had i think it was a couple weeks ago we had i want to say it was 10 feet of of fall with negative ice um <laughs> from the hog line in was probably like six or eight feet of fall. Like what are you even supposed to do with that? Um, so no, I'm not, I've not come to terms with it. Um, I, I do think there is something that's really special about those communities, um, in arena curling because you have to like be passionate about the sport. You gotta to, want, want it like to drag the rocks out, to prepare the ice you know some yep. you know freeze the hacks in with the zamboni ice like you gotta want to yep. do it yeah yeah and when i was in austin like i had a almost an hour-long drive to get there it was an hour if there was bad traffic like to do that each way and man texas yeah. drivers like ugh, you know you, you never knew what was gonna it was like is this gonna be the last rock i ever throw i have to get on i-35 when i go home um <laughs> So I feel that it way, was... but it's because I'm I'm not sure if my knee's gonna explode. <laughs> it's, it's not. Am I gonna like make it home? But uh, um, but yeah, I mean, just going. I I want to. The biggest thing for me going from dedicated ice to arena ice. I had a lot of opportunities in Green Bay just to as a first and second year curler to learn like some of the basics of technique. Um, I was really fortunate, like we had Bill Rhyme up there. So just had some people with lots of experience to, that were willing to share their knowledge with me. Uh, and then when I got to Austin, it was a, it was a crash course in learning how to read ice. And that, that honestly was one of the biggest lessons I took. Like when I went back to like dedicated clubs for a spiel, we tended to pick up the ice quicker because we're used to looking for little Just, nuances. Like what does it do here? What does it do on this spot? What's the break point? Like things that in green Bay like, just was relatively predictable. I kind of knew what to expect. And I was just kind of going off of that and not going off of like, I was going off my past experience and not what the ice is actually doing. And I learned how to read ice a whole lot better. Once I got to arena. I've had the same thing going to, I like to take, um, curlers who have, haven't spilled before to Ma Ma mapleton to speak. oh yeah because it's a lot of fun it's a smaller club they good food all all weekend um but the the walls will the concrete block walls will heave a little bit in the w winter making for some super fun angles um yeah and giving someone the bu buck turn for the first time and watching their mind explode is confused is them a really little bit. fun yeah. Yeah. The first couple of times you have to call like, all right, I want, I'm going to put my broom here and you're just going to have to trust me on this. Uh, throw this weight, throw at the broom with this turn. And There's a whole it. lot of, tr exactly. Or sweep it at the beginning to hold a certain line. There's a whole lot of trust that has to happen between skip and sweepers <laughs> on arena eyes. Heck yeah. Yeah. Cause I curled, um, I curled like randomly one league game down in, um, not net Nashville. 
uh, Knoxville. Okay. On arena ice. And, like, had to drag the rocks out, had to pebble it, and, well, I didn't pebble it, but, like, put the hacks out, snow it, and I was like, then we got, like, six six ends in. Then we had to be done because we had to be off. And, yeah. like, if I got to keep doing this, I don't think I'd curl. Like, after being spoiled for 20-plus 20, 20 years of Madison? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've had that conversation. I think we kind of had that conversation. Uh, we went to Kansas City. We didn't, yeah. I mean, not really together, but we were, we, we had, we had two, two teams. teams and we, yeah. we were, I think we were sitting around. I don't think it was on the drive home or maybe we had this conversation in our car on the drive home that like, if that, if that was all you ever knew, it would probably be okay. Yeah. But if you, you know, came from a dedicated ice, even decent dedicated ice, would you, would you keep curling in that? And that's, I mean, that's the. I don't know, it's a tricky question. Like you said, you know, you've you've got people that you like to hang out with. You, it's something that you like to do, but it's it's a different experience when it's when you're talking it, about curling. It, it really is, and I think that that it's been it was interesting because you know I obviously went from dedicated to arena, and then mm -hmm. that arena ice went to dedicated ice for a year, and mm -hmm. then went back to arena. And it was interesting to see how that club dynamic changed. Like we had that opportunity to get a whole lot of people through the doors. I think the club size at Lone Star doubled um, when we wow. had that dedicated wow. ice. Like went from like cool. 75 people to uh, 150. I think last year they had 145 or 150 unique curlers even now. And they we lost curlers when we went to – that had to go back to arena ice. There was just some people that said, I'm not no, – no, no, thank you. Sure. Um, and – Yet at the same time, like that community there is really, really good. Like they'll pre-stack that there's a brewery next door. So they'll go next door. They'll hang out before league. Sometimes they'll hang out after league. Like the community at Lone Star is a really impressive one um, just to have that community that's there. So you, I know that like when the day comes, however many years down the line it is that they get dedicated ice again, they're going to explode because you have all the good things of the, like that dedicated clubs will have from like a community perspective they're just missing the actual good curling part of it. Yeah. Uh, sure. You give them that opportunity to have the really good quality ice. And I think that something, someplace like that's going to explode. And especially with the culture in Austin, um, I think it would fit really, really well. Is, I don't, I'm not uh, super familiar with Austin. My assumption is that real estate is just bananas and that's what's holding, getting dedicated facility down there. Also, it's hard. Yeah, to, to it's also hard with. Um, you said you doubled from seventy-five to one hundred fifty. Like, that's not a lot of people to support a brand new dedicated facility where you got to do probably a lot of fundraising. No, but to I mean, it's a lot of people build. for a arena club, though. I think most arena clubs are not yeah. one hundred and fifty. But <laughs> to pay your dues and to pay for the build, pay sure. for a facility to build it, probably I don't know, build or rent, but. I assume probably rent to start, but yeah, you have, you absolutely have to rent there. Um, and the real estate is the biggest challenge, um, finding space that you can afford to get onto, but then also finding a landlord who's willing to work, potentially work with you on some of the construction aspect of it. Um, I mean, even just arena curling there is expensive, uh, club members and the club have to pay a lot just to get access to the ice. Cause there's not a whole lot of ice rinks, um, and a place like Austin, you have quite a few transplants. So you have people from the Midwest or from Canada. Um, so hockey rinks are at a premium themselves. Do and you then mind? you have to take one of those. Go ahead. What's, Sorry. What's I, didn't... I, I was nope. just going to say, do you mind sharing how much you were paying to curl in so, Austin? Yeah. So Austin, they had, uh, I haven't looked to see what they did for this season. Um, but last season, if you wanted to curl in one league, they had, they actually had like five different times that you could curl four or five different league options. Okay. Um, in Austin. That's pretty good. Um, That's if pretty you, good for arena It's ice. really good. Really good. Yeah. Um, they, if you wanted to just sign up, just do one league, uh, you paid $800 for the year. Um, you would get, I would say, probably 45 to 48 weeks of curling out of that if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to curl okay. like every week. So you do have almost a full year basically out of it. Um, but it was 800 for that one. And if you want to do like the unlimited, like curl in as many leagues as you want, 1500 mm -hmm. bucks for the year. Wow. Wow. But that's for, that's for a year. I mean, almost essentially a year. And that's double like our season length. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. That's we're playing twenty. <clears throat> Yeah, I think we play weeks. about twenty weeks. Twenty or so. weeks or so with no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's no, it's it's like twenty weeks total. With yeah. I mean, of of game of, play, of, and then there's of leagues, yeah, yeah, and then there's a, you know, there's some holiday things in there where <clears throat> there's still ice and you can use it, but it's not scheduled league play. Wow, right. That's yeah. We had scheduled league play. Like I did, I took off summers because I would sometimes go to help out with with. Um, with substituting if people needed it, but um, I basically curled September through May, and so it ended up being like 36 weeks or something like that that I would curl like league play for that. So okay. it's it's a lot up front, but when you actually like break it down on per game, we actually I was I think we were relatively fortunate um, in terms of what we were able to get out of it. Sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It sounds it sounds like a lot based on the length of your season it's not awful but still it's not considering not you're an class. arena it's like eh, yeah. Yeah. you know we're, we're a little give and truly, take yeah and where it truly gets to be a lot is if you want to go and, and bonspiel like if you want to travel to to bonspiels from austin the nearest dedicated ice uh from where we were was i think 12 hour drive i think that was, that was the closest well, dedicated kansas city so, now, probably yep, kansas city yep. yeah kansas city Denver and Phoenix, I think, would probably and then I I never looked at the drive to to Atlanta for Peachtree, but I think those would be the closest drives. Sure. So you have to fly, you basically have to fly. Um, yeah. So that I think is where that the expenses really catch up with you if you want to be traveling and, and go to see different clubs, whether it's in five and under or other things like. You then have to pay because then you're looking at what's you know have to pay for flights, rental car. You know, obviously, you're still going to have lodging no matter what you're doing, but right, um, those expenses add up pretty quick. Sure, sure, yeah. And you guys, I, I, your club, uh, Lone Star travels pretty well. I think you, the last couple of years, have had at least two and maybe three teams up in the Madison five and under. Everybody's great. Yeah. Like everybody I met from Lone Star has been, been you know, happy to be here and just, just good people. So yeah. That's and that was one of the biggest things like that a, a few of us really tried to get others to do, um, especially for five and under, is take advantage of those opportunities. Like, there's no better place to go and try and no better opportunity to try and like learn play on dedicated ice than doing so at a five and under, where you're going to meet people your same experience level, close to your skill level. So you're going to probably get trounced a few t like once or twice, but you're also going to eventually play down to your like similar competition level at some of those fields so great way to like learn the community have the opportunity to play on dedicated ice so i always push the madison one knowing that like there's going to be other lone star people there so there's at least some like familiar faces for people um yeah i think last year we had seven curlers total go up there i know sure, we've at least got one team signed up for the frozen five under again this year yeah that's awesome so, that's awesome um yeah tell tell us a little bit about your five and under journey i know you i know you spieled a lot last year i think if uh yep. if i remember correctly yeah last year was my was my final year of eligibility so i i i wanted to try and get back to national the five u nationals last year so my plan was all right i want to try and go to a bunch of different places but also have an opportunity to see some new clubs so um so we, I think we spiel, we went to five different five and unders. And if you say that Arizona is a different time zone than Denver, then technically we curled in five time zones for five spiels last year. So that was great. <laughs> I think um, it depends on the time of year. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly right now, right now, mountain standard mountain daylight is separate. So I'm going to yeah. claim that as five yeah. spiels in five time zones. Uh, there you go. Okay. And uh, so that was, that was a great experience. It's for me, it started in 20, right before the pandemic, 2020, um, I did the Wasa five and under. I don't even remember how it was a ton of teams that were there. Okay. And that was my first travel spiel experience. And uh, I was skipping. I had only been skipping for like two months at that point in Green Bay. So I had <laughs> no idea what I was doing. Um, so we, you know, L out it in our third game, like loss, loss, loss. Uh, and I had a blast. Like it was so much, it was still a ton of fun. Had, plenty to drink um obviously that facility <laughs> is a great facility to be at um just from like the warm room and like being able to watch other games so um i had that one pandemic hit and we moved 
And so I decided, okay, I want to try and once things started opening back up again, I wanted to try to try a five and under again, see what would happen. So for sure. we signed up. Um, I got a team. Um, two of us were from Austin. My vice's friend um, who lived in LA, and at the time, LA still had the um, oh, Los Southern Angeles California Sporting. Curling Center. Dedicated. Yep, yep, yeah. this, yep, RIP. Um, they still had that one uh, in place. So we had him come and join us. And then a friend of mine from college who I introduced to curling in green Bay, he came down from Appleton to, to play with us. So it was kind of a mishmash okay. team. We had only two of us had like actually played together or we had different combinations that had played together. And I was thinking, okay, I just want to win a game this time. Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. I went 0 and three. I just want to win a game, set sure. a reasonable goal. And we found ourselves in the a semifinals. And I was wondering what in the world Whoops. is happening here? Like, <laughs> like, Thanks, thanks, Mason and Lauren. You must have uh, set the draw schedule up for me, or or we got we got some edge sheets had that arena advantage. Apparently, there you go. Uh, so found ourselves one game away, basically, from qualifying for the five U nationals, and I was thinking, oh, maybe next year we could actually do well. So we signed up the following year at Phoenix, um, and then went back to Madison. Both times we won the first couple, then lost a couple, um, and then we went to Denver last uh, March 2023, and ran through it and, and managed to win that one and qualify for five U nationals. So it was just, it was a la our last chance to qualify that season. And, um, that was such a cool experience to be able to, you know, only curling for four years and saying, I went to a national championship. Now, obviously we know the 500 national championship from a competitive level, not at the same level as other ones, but dang it, I'm still going to tell people I curled in a national championship. They don't have to know anymore. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. And the competition level at that, I think, can surprise a bit some people. Um, I think we saw a little bit of that at 5U Nationals in Chaska last year that there's some really good curlers that are out there that are coming up to that system. So last year when we tried to qualify back, I mean, we never lost more than a game at any one. I think we lost two A finals and A semi and A quarter. So, like, we were always right there um, and still had an absolute blast with it because you have this community that's – in the same boat as you just started all adults um and it's just people that are trying to find the game and learn the culture of the sport and there was not a whole lot of things better i don't think for an, a newer adult curler than that than like one of those bond spiels because you get the good competition but you also get the really good like culture camaraderie and community that you get out of out of those events yeah i, I was there doing the streaming of uh, you came in for a couple games and did some co co commentary, and um, that was my first experience like watching that much five and under. Like, I mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever actually watched a five five and under game, and there were teams that were um, uh, there were a couple teams that were obviously a lot better than uh, the rest the rest of the field, but the teams that were um, the teams that were all there were were fairly close in in skill le le level. Um, there were some good games. There were a couple of less good, uh, games. Less good games. There were a couple of <laughs> um, uh, strategic mistakes that happened, but sure. um, nothing crazy. Like I didn't see anything that was like call you know call an appeal when they should have drawn because they're down five. But um, I didn't see anything too too weird. Sure. Great. What. I'm gonna. I would. Do you have any more you want to talk about on the five U nationals? Like I'm not. I just don't know what questions to ask. I think you guys could probably talk about this some more, but. No, I I I was gonna ask. Uh, well, ask your question. I've, Mine's I've not one. related. So if you have more five U related ones, no, I don't. Go. I don't have five U related yeah. questions. All right. I was gonna ask, what's the difference between playing at your new arena club? compared to your old old arena club like uh, how's the experience better worse i mean i shouldn't say that that's putting you on the spot uh where you're gonna alienate somebody but like what's the differences i you're guess you're suggesting that people that play at a, an arena club in utah are listening to the show Other well than... <laughs> maybe somebody somewhere is listening to this if show. you are Not email the show this at, guy uh, knows everybody in the five the you show. yeah if, if you are listening maybe. in utah email the show craig sucks at the curling network <laughs> God, these people in Utah are the worst. My, <laughs> uh, uh, 
it's two clubs that are in very different situations um, in general. So I, I, I haven't had the opportunity to curl at other arena clubs. That was one thing I wish I had, that I kind of wish I had done a little bit more of was gone to some bond spiels at other arena clubs just to learn some of that culture. Cause my experience is really just league in one versus league in the other. Um, and Texas and Utah culture are very different um, from some of the cultural and religious backgrounds. And that kind of can bleed its way into some of the curling culture as well. So in Utah, for example, um, liquor laws are a whole lot stricter um, than they are going to be in basically anywhere else. So room stacking can be a little bit more challenging. Um, where the club is at is kind of at a recreational area. So there's a rec center next door. It's a sport like sports facility all around it. So not really great opportunities for broom stacking right there. And in Austin, there was Austin Beer Works was next door. So you walk out the door of the ice facility and you are on their patio with, you know, and can walk right up to the bar to grab a beer. Um, so the two, I'd just say the culture because of how they're located, but also just some of the culture things behind the scenes just create some different, some different vibes. Both places are, are highly competitive. I would say that the culture in Austin was a lot more of like recreational laid back, super fun. The culture in, at the oval is really competitive. People want to win. Um, and people are, we, they travel from here. You can at least drive. It's, I think a seven hour drive to Denver, uh, Vegas just got dedicated ice. That's six hours away. Um, so it's obviously a longer drive, but it's still drivable. Um, and so they take it more advantage of those things here. And there's a lot of, um, inertia for curlers here to compete in more competitive events and Austin, maybe not quite as competitive and a little bit more focused on like recreational laid back fun curling. Okay. Can you drink at the club dirt or no? No, nope. Uh, at least not that I'm aware of. I believe at their bond, like at the bond spiel uh, that they have at the Oval every April, I believe yeah, that like the they license for it. Yeah, yeah. They, I know. I've seen at least I've heard or seen pictures like people have beers and stuff next to the ice, but um, but otherwise I've never seen anything out there at all. So, got so. it. Got it. Do you still have to like get a license to go to a bar in Utah? You have to what? show your driver's license whenever you go into a bar, no matter what your, no matter your age. That was a fun surprise for my mother-in-law when she came to visit. I was like, "Have your ID ready," and she said, "Okay, sure, yeah." Uh -huh. Do you have and to like, like buy a like guest license or something? When when I was there, uh, it's been I don't know a long time, many but, moons ago. Uh, Back in my we day. had to <laughs> like basically you had to be a member of a bar and to drink sure uh but you could like it was basically a cover charge you huh. could buy a one day membership for you know a Ten couple bucks. A, a, buck a buck or sure. five bucks Whatever. or something yeah. like that and mm -hmm. essentially everybody just looked at it as a cover charge uh -huh. and then they'd give you like this little membership, membership card. card and then you could drink at this bar for the hmm. evening interesting but, Interesting. Nope. I uh, don't have that here, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, finding like different kinds of beer can be challenging, which has been my biggest challenge. Like I went to Costco just to try to see what I could find, like for a, a larger thing and couldn't find anything anywhere. And finally I went towards like the very, very back and tucked in the corner where they like actually store stuff. There was two pallets worth of beer that were sitting there. So I was, <laughs> it's just, you have to, you have to go on a little bit of a scavenger hunt to, to find, to find drinks sometimes. Okay. Interesting. Got it. Blow out the dust and what did you end up with? Have you been to? Hold on, well, hold on. I want to hear what kind of beer he found. Oh well, yeah, what kind of beer did you find? Uh, Sorry, I did find. I, I found a sampler, uh, summer seasonal sampler pack from Big Sky Brewing. Uh, okay. So that's up in Big Sky, Montana. Um, so I like a couple other things. Uh, I got a Hucket, which I thought was a very good uh, choice for a curling podcast. So, um, drinking the Hucket uh, Huckleberry Blonde Ale tonight. All right, that's pretty good. That's yeah. a pretty good All name. Right. I like it. All right. Uh, have you been to, or I guess before you left, we'll call it a traditional bond spiel, not five and under. Uh. uh yeah, I did a couple. Uh, once before I left, I, I I didn't travel. Actually, no, I did travel to one. I did the Silver Spoon in Wausau. Okay. Um, 
uh, right like two, like a week before everything shut down in 2020. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the very first spiel I ever did was at Green Bay. I did the the mix spiel that they have every spring there. So I did that one. Um, and then not the f- I just a little bit after moving when Stevens Point opened, I actually went for their grand opening bond spiel. Um, oh, okay. And got destroyed by Mike Poplinski. Didn't know who he was. A lot of people found do. Out, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> found out the next morning, like, why is this guy so good? Oh, that's why. Oh. Okay. Got it. Got it. That makes Fair. a whole lot more sense now. Fair. Uh, I ask because I, I think there's um, a bit of a critique with and I, I love the vibe. I've I've emceed events or emceed the the five and under um, Saturday evening festivities uh, the past three years, I think. And the people there are great. the The five and under sect is is definitely enthusiastic. But I think if there's a criticism, it's it's that you're not you're not getting some of the like tradition or like some of this some you, you go to your new curler and you go to a spiel with a you know an old guard curler finger quotes you know somebody's been curling for 30 35 years and it's like okay well we're kicking their ass we're not going to do this because you know it's the, we're cordial or or you know this is happening so we're going to do this because we're not here to show anybody up and I, I think some of that gets lost a little bit in the enthusiasm of the five and under and now with the five and under nationals, it's like some of those events can become maybe a little overly competitive for the level of curling lack for, for lack of a better term. And, and so I was just curious if, if you can have any, have any perspective on like the difference, is there something to going to a spiel with, with some, some old heads, we'll call them or some veteran curlers uh, versus, you know, spieling as a, a five and under collective. Yeah, I think there, I think there is something to be said to that just in terms of the, the spirit of curling or um, the advice I got right when I started curling, my supervisor or the person that hired me was also a curler. Um, mm-hmm. And so he told me never let curling get in the way of a good bond spiel. That was this, the advice that he gave <laughs> me before I went to my very first event. Um, and that's something that I that I've I've taken with me, and I and I hear where you're coming from on some of that. I will say, because of the nature of five and under curling, you might be kicking somebody's butt, but we do really stupid things sometimes. Sure. And a seven zero lead sometimes I have uh, seen becomes some wild swings and <laughs> yeah, uh, five and under scores there. at Fair. nationals. So. Okay. All yeah. right. So there is an element of like, I'm gonna like. I, if the other team's not going to shake because uh, they want to try and come back, that like I'm going to try to not be too aggressive here. Um, at the same time, um, at the, I mean, you're you're trying to balance that competitive nature versus the fun of it. Um, and yeah, I think there is something fun that can come from like going to a spiel and just having a good time with people and having that experience. But I also think, especially if you look at like the C and D events for like a five and under you're going to see people just who cares like this is this is fun let's have a good time so i I think it really just depends on like what event you're looking at um and and what the goals are of the curlers that are there because some people go to five and under qualifiers with no intent of qualifying they just want to have a good time i just wanted to win a game in madison in uh 2021 and found myself uh having my first you know experience of malort and everything else so um (laughs) Yeah. Gross. So uh, I agree, but I got those, you know, you still get that experience. And I will say there is something to be said for the culture of five, U kind of infusing itself in the rest of the tradition of curling. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in a sport that we've seen this huge, like push of vibrance in the U S from that kind of age or that experience level, um, in a okay. sport that's really dominated by tradition. Right. And yeah. sometimes when you have too much tradition take over, then you kind of see what you can argue is happening a little bit in Canada where you're starting to see some clubs close down and you're seeing some challenges with it. So same, sometimes same that's Scott, Scotland too. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes that change and that breath of fresh air, it's different from the culture and it changes some of that. Um, but sometimes that can help keep things a little bit more vibrant as well. Good point. I, I like that perspective. That. That's a yeah. good point of view. 
Uh, you've been doing, well, kind of mentioned a little bit in the, in the, in the opener, you've been doing some writing. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, as you guys know, there's not a whole lot of coverage of U S curling teams in general, or just curling in the U S overall. Um, and if there is coverage, it's usually it, kind of, there's a, a podcast. Or, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> there is a general shortage that, uh, you guys do your best with, no, like uh, but a podcast can only, that's a lot of time for you guys to put into, to provide coverage for that. I mean, in between, especially once the season's going for you guys in between a podcast, there's a couple events that have happened and you have to try and go back and recap all of that. So I wanted to try and highlight some of the curlers that we might not hear about, um, in curling in general. So I, last year I almost had, I almost wrote like a preview before five and under nationals, but then I ended up going as an alternate for a team from the oval. So I was like, I'm not going to publish anything about this considering I'm associated with the team. So I, this year I decided to start, um, taking all of the things I've had, people I've had the opportunity to meet games I've been able to watch and start writing about it. So I started writing about five and under arena curling, club curling on uh, Substack. Um, so it's curlingintheusa.substack.com. Um, I call it the stones and stripes. Um, the, I think probably the best way to talk about it is I would call it, I like to focus on grassroots competitive curling. So that's the five and under arena club nationals. Talking about people that maybe don't have the time, the resources to really compete at that highest level in the US um, that are still really good curlers in their own right and deserve some recognition for that. So I wanted to provide some feedback or not some feedback, but I wanted to provide some coverage and, and highlight those. Grassroots competitive is the nice way to say it. If I'm gonna talk about myself instead of high performance curling, I could call it low performance curling. Um, oh, that's fine. So, so I call it so high enthusiasm curling. I'm, there I'm, we go. I'm there we go. firmly uh, placed in the low performance curling category. You Say, I think uh, spectacularly mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I strive for that one. I strive for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I uh, started doing some writing there. And then uh, recently I started having some, uh, doing some some short articles as well for the curling news as well to really talk, fo give a focus on U.S. curling because the curling news is by and large going to be focused on things in Canada. Um, and so it's an opportunity just to talk about some more things uh, curling in the U.S. and give a little bit more coverage and love to teams that deserve it. How did you get involved with them? Uh, I had, I think I had like three blog posts, three sub stacks get posted. And then I realized one Friday that I had a DM request and it was from them just saying, Hey, we're looking for to, we want to provide some more coverage for us stuff. And you're obviously writing about curling in the U S so, uh, I met, met up with George and talked with him a little bit and just decided why why not like it's an opportunity to talk more about curling in the in the u.s so let's go for it okay i uh i was roommates with george at the house of hearts one year there you go we I... drank too much surprisingly <laughs> shocker just shocker. so we know the, uh george who george carries george, george, george carries there you go he played with uh mike harris at the 1998 oh. olympics and George is the owner or Must be the editor or editor yep. of the Curling yep. News? Yep, he's the editor in chief of the Curling News. All right. So yeah, it was really nice to to have the opportunity from him to just to, you know, shine a little bit more of a spotlight. I had the opportunity to go watch the um Everest North American Club Championships in I went to the women's draw um uh, okay. in in Denver. And I came back as thinking, okay, I'm going to have this cool, like, I'm going to write my thoughts. So like my experiences being there in person, I watched the men's event on TV, going to do like something on that. And of course I was like, I'm going to have the first thing out here. People are going to see it. And of course, George had already written something uh, about Bastard. it before I had the opportunity to post anything. So <laughs> beat me to the punch, but join forces now instead. Nice. Yep. Nice. Uh, I have a trivia question for you two. Not really a trivia question. All right. That picture in the background behind Ben's head, do you guys know where that is? The barn? Yeah. <sighs> no. That? Mm. Did you take that picture, Ben? My nephew took that picture. 
It's a good picture. Took, you know where this yeah. is. I know where this is. I have I have a very similar picture, but Got it. mine isn't probably that good. Those look like the Rockies, but I'd have no. I I don't I don't know where that is. The Rockies is, is a big area. That, well, I'm just saying it looks like the Rockies. Technically, uh, it's not in the Rockies. Wow. It's its own mountain range that's only like 30 miles long. Okay. It's, that is Grand Teton back there. Hmm. That was, I was thinking Grand Teton, but then I looked at it and again, I thought, hmm. well, it looks kind of like Pikes Peak. So that's why I, I went in Rockies. I panicked. Yeah. I just, I saw it and I. Got it. And I'm like, I know where that barn is. Got it. Where is the barn? Uh, Just north of Jackson Hole. Sweet. Is it a famous barn? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why necessarily, but probably yes. because it's very picturesque. Probably because of this probably picture. picture. Yeah. Like the yeah. there, yeah. everybody takes this picture. Got it. At some point, it's on like this yep, little dirt ass road. <laughs> yep. It's an old rotting barn with beautiful mountains in the background. So yeah. You know. Sweet. Well, that's cool that your nephew took it. Yep, budding photographer, so I figured I'd support that when we were trying to furnish the place that we were uh, moving into here. So I figured it'd work out well for me. Got nice. It. How long have you been in Salt Lake? Uh, about three summer. or four months now. Three or four yep, months. since the summer. Yep. I, I, in one ear, out the other, Joel. It's, it's okay. not the, fir it's the first time you met me. Joel, <laughs> you're going to have a child here pretty soon. You're going to realize that shit's right. going to get that way. It just, yeah. it, too much going on. Brain Got goes, it. So, brain goes yeah. to mush. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you ski, Ben? Are you looking forward to ski I season? I have skied, and I've skied out at Park City once um, just because I will be spending money on traveling for curling. I probably won't have the money, at least this year, to spend on skiing. Got it. Um, Got it. So hopefully maybe next year if I can get a pass uh, early or something like that. I can. Do you, do you have a guest room so Craig and I can come out and ski? Yes. All right. Bring it. That's the correct answer. Perfect. As long as you bring some beer with you from out of state, we're all good. We we can probably do that. I think that would be a range. We could probably thing. even drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could like dumb and dumber road trip it and just bring a whole lot. Dude, of would beer. we get the dog car? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you gotta bring the scooter. The, the shagging wagon. Carry Let's the, go. You can't carry the skis on the <laughs> little scooter thing. You know, in the dog car. As long as it's as lots long as of I beer can and lots of We have to have a, a hill out there where I can snowboard, so we can't go to Alta. Yeah, it's fine. But we can go as long Everywhere as we can else, snowboard. Except Deer. Can't go to Deer Valley either. Can't go to Deer whatever. Valley. I know there's some in Utah where you can't snowboard. All right. Go uh, let's yeah. get on. Okay. Our, we'll get on. Questions. We're Sorry. not going to kick you off, but we got some questions we gotta, we're got going to ask you. I think we kind of figured out early in the show how you uh, how you started curling, so we won't ask you that one. Um, other than your home club, where where is your favorite place to curl? Or anything you've ever considered your, your home club. Oh, yeah, I guess, or anything you consider your home club. Uh, this one, I, gosh, I, there's two clubs that I would say are basically in a dead heat. And I, I promise this is not because of who the hosts are of the podcast, but it. it's Madison and Fairbanks are the two places that I, my favorite to play at. Um, I would probably give the slightest of edges to Madison just because you just walk up to the tap and pour your beer. <laughs> um, you, you gotta go and buy it in Fairbanks. So. Um, so you have to go to the beer there or you have to pay for the round for somebody in Fairbanks, whereas Madison, I don't just have to pay for it. So yeah. I'm going to give the slight edge, uh, to, to Madison for that. All right. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll How take cold it. was it when you went to Fairbanks? We got really lucky last February. I think we had high, like it was a high of like zero or uh, five every day. Um, okay. it got, um, maybe just under zero, but we got really lucky when we were there. It was about ne negative 40 or 50 the week before Oof. so i was very happy with that and it was also fun taking people from texas or from that had grown up in like warm <laughs> climates yeah up there so that they was had great. no kind of concept <clears throat> yeah at least you it had an idea of what to expect yeah exactly the i the one uh, teammate that i brought with me uh his first time ever being in wisconsin was for the frozen five and under um and I thought he was going to die as soon as we walked out of the doors of the airport. And I found myself thinking, I haven't been too far uh, removed from the Midwest because my first thought was, if you're not in the wind, it's not bad. Uh, and then I looked over at him and I thought he was going to kill me for saying and, that. Oh, and fucking one of those years, <laughs> it snowed like a foot on Saturday night. 
It was that year. Yep. Yeah, it was that year. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It was you or one of the Stevens Point guys was driving us back at two o'clock in the morning over to the uh, hotel. Yeah, so. that was that was me. I was I was pulling out and I turned right out of the club to go to my house and I see like two people walking down the street, like walking back to the hotel. I'm like, well, I can't let them. I can't. I can't let them walk. So I turned and yeah. them up and drove them down to the hotel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you grabbed my two teammates. So uh, <laughs> yeah. they they shut it down. I think that weekend. Yeah, very very likely that was yeah. So there's that. All right. Uh, what's your favorite bon- bond spiel? Oh man, um, I will go the other way on this one. So again, most of my experience has been five and under stuff. So I am gonna have a little bit of a skewed perspective. I loved going to the Fairbanks five and under last year. Um, that event was awesome. They had, there was a great like competitive nature. Like they had timing, they had an official. So for those who hadn't had experience with like an actual competitive event before, it was really good. But the people in Mad- or in Fairbanks are in, are incredible. Um, and we had a potluck, I think it was on Friday night where there was halibut and salmon and moose and caribou. Um, wow. Yeah. The, there was a huge aurora when we were there, so we drove out of the city and, and checked that out. Uh, the people from Fairbanks, like the community comes out to watch like some of the games, and we were playing against a team from Fairbanks, and they would just pound on the glass after like made <laughs> shots, especially from the Fairbanks teams. And there's nobody else in the ice in the in the in the ice house playing except for the two of us. And all of a sudden, like it's quiet, 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 and they make a good shot and just banging on the glass like it's a hockey game. It was awesome. It was nice. great. I knew they were cheering against me, and it didn't matter. It was didn't awesome. Matter. I loved it. That's uh, I have been to Fairbanks to curl. It's been again a long time, but I was up there a couple times, and they really treat the out of towners great because they know that it's it's tough to get it's a, there. It's all to get there. And That's awesome. So that you get treated first class when you do when you do make the trip. Nice. Yep. The fresh baked danishes every morning, top notch. Wow top notch wow all right well we have a question here uh it says outside money and championships aside i don't think you have won money or championships what's the weirdest thing you won so what's the best or worst uh raffle prize uh that you've ever won at a bond spiel because i'm hoping you're supporting Um, the clubs when you go five and under spiel and and buy raffle tickets absolutely but that actually involves me winning a raffle so (laughs) um i I will say this is not the worst, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, Max uh, Frozen Five and Under last year had donated some uh, mystery mix drink that he had made. Um, oh uh, yes, Madison. I remember giving these away on the liquor paddles, and it was uh, so, it was a bottle of blue or green. Yep, or orange. We had green. <laughs> we won green. green. <laughs> we want. We took. I grabbed the green when I had my when I had my number called, and. I was fully prepared. Like it smelled horrible. And then you, <laughs> you, you put it back. It was like, actually that was really good. And our bottle was gone in about 15 minutes. So, nice. um, so that I, I will give that. I will also say, um, I think I am the only person in existence that has the complete collection of horse trace trophies from the frozen five and under I have, <laughs> I, I grabbed these here. I have, I won it last year. So last year I got the full size. Uh, yeah. The previous year came in last place, and so we got the bringing up the rear trophy. Yeah, this is probably the, uh, the horse's ass. This is this is the weirdest thing I've ever won at a bond spiel. <laughs> um, the back half of the horse. So, and I think I'm the only person that owns both sides oh, of that. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's excellent. I'm gonna have that claim to fame while I can. Club. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's right. uh, uh next qu- question? What's uh, what's like, what's the skill or talent outside of curling that you have? Oh boy. Um, so let's board see games. skill or talent. Uh, it's board games. I don't know if that's a skill or a talent and more of just uh here's something that I've sunk a bunch of money into that I have a lot of, um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm that's talented at, at <laughs> there you go. I'm talented at, at, uh, pulling board games out to play. I will say, that's probably like a superpower of mine is someone can tell me a little bit about them and I can give them a good board game to recommend based off of, especially if they don't play board games. Here's a good example for you to get into into the hobby. So 
um, I will say that's that's probably a skill or talent I have is wow. recommending board games wow. to people. Huh? That is that that is probably a skill or talent. Colin Huffman's comes big in. into board games. In case you ever run into him, you could talk for hours. Same with Tyler Tardy. I, I have a feeling there's going to be a good uh, board game, uh, especially if you get to those two together at, a, at an event. I have a feeling there's going to be some good uh, some, some, some good board game chat. On. They're going to start a oh, yeah. start a, pod, a board game podcast. Maybe. Do we need a board, buddies. board game buddies? <laughs> Do we need a board game spiel where you play oh. one game on the ice and one game off the ice? Oh man. I think Charlotte actually did something like that a couple of years ago. I don't know if they did it last year, but I think two years ago they had a board game spiel where you had your games on the ice, but then you also played games in between your draws and you earned points, oh, which sure. helped like move you up or down the rankings, like through those through the games as well. Oh. All right. That seems fun. Yeah. Uh yeah. Okay. How about uh who like what or who has has helped you along the way in in your curling journey like you i'm assuming you've gotten better found somebody that has at least helped you get there yeah um i would say some of the members at green bay were really helpful for me just like as i was you know skipping when i had no business doing it in the competitive league in green bay um mm -hmm. and just taking pity on me and sharing some some guidance as the game went along. Um, so like Bill Rhyme or the Pauls in Green Bay were really, really good about that. Um, for me, one of the biggest things that I, um, I think that really helped me a lot, especially now being, you know, an arena curler where I don't have practice time. I can't go out and work on my delivery or my yeah. release or things like that as much. So what I found that can help me out is just watching a lot of curling. Um, I know Randy Furby had kind of alluded to this as well. Yeah, for um, sure. I, watching a lot especially of women's games um because generally speaking women's high performance curling is at least a little bit more analogous to club curling um from the standpoint of they're not throwing the six second peels that well, how, you, know, you the, can't the throw are, six second five seconds six. come on man <laughs> give me a couple more beers and we'll see what happens but <laughs> uh, but just having it's different. And listen, There's a difference between throwing them yeah. six seconds yeah. and hitting something. I can't. I can't throw, throw six second six triples seconds. either. But I, <laughs> I can but throw. I, I can't make it. But I can throw it. <laughs> exactly. Um, but just like watching those Got games it. and hearing the breakdowns from, you know, from the booth and hearing them talk through that. Um, even some of the commentary, like from, uh, like Tyler George, for example, and some of the U.S. stuff, and just hearing their commentary on those and taking that and implementing that into your games, whether that is learning situations or learning the proper rotation to throw for a certain type of hit, like what the rock's going to do, how the angles are going to work. Um, that is where I think I've been able to grow the most is by watching a lot of curling and then taking that and using that situation. I'm um, going applying that when I'm on the ice. Nice. That's a good answer. I like That's that. That's a good answer. I'm looking forward to this next question though. Yeah. I can't read yeah. it. All right. Uh, no you're way. going to about Bond spill with your ideal team. You can take anybody, living or dead. Uh, doesn't curlers, non curlers, curlers, non curler. Doesn't matter. This is your ideal team. Uh, what what's your team? Where are you going? Um. All right. Going to the Fairbanks International. Okay. Um, I've heard that that spiel is incredible. Um, and going back to Fairbanks when it's not zero degrees sounds like a good time. So um, I'd like to go up to that one. Um, I have a feeling that that, from what I've heard, is a just big party. So um, get me to that one. Uh, the team I would throw together for that, um, I am a huge fan of Northern Ontario. So Kristen McCarvel, I would want to curl with. Good choice. Um, especially if they bring those North Stars jerseys with God them. God damn it. Don't uh, bring those up. I'm still trying to get one of those. If you find out, let me know how. And okay, I, uh, I, will. I will. Yeah. I need gotcha. to grab one of those. Uh, I mentioned him earlier, but Tyler Tardy, big into board games. Uh, I've had the opportunity to interact with him a little bit, um, and he's just been super helpful anytime I've had questions or anything. So I think he'd be really fun off the ice, and on the ice would be uh, really helpful for me. Um, I'm going to go Tara Peterson. I think it's not enough love for what she's doing <laughs> on the ice, so yeah. throw her out there. Okay. Um, and then my, f uh, I'm gonna throw a non curler for this last one. This would have been a whole lot better if the Lynx had won last night and not gotten screwed over by the officials. They really uh, did but get Lindsay, screwed. That was awful. That yeah. was 
hot garbage. Uh, Lindsay Whalen, um, I would bring out there. She's from Minnesota. Uh, so she understands a lot of, uh, Midwest culture based off of what I've seen her do on like the, like court side for games. I have a feeling that she'd be a good party, uh, good curling. Uh, and I think she'd be a lot of fun to curl with. Nice. I like that. Good answer. All right. All right. Last one. I, I can, I'm going to interject for okay, just go, one second. Go, go. Krista's great. Great person. Super nice. Amazing curler. But if you're looking for somebody for the Fairbanks International, I think you're going to want to go with Mike McCarville, her <laughs> husband. He is definitely more of the party guy. I, I was just going to say a little bit more of a party yeah. animal than. Now, I mean. Chris is going to get them home safe every day. She's going to have she's going to have juice boxes and cookies. acetaminophen for Dude, them every morning. Somebody is going to get you're in Fairbanks. She's somebody's going to take care of you and get you back to the hotel anyways. <laughs> I feel like you're missing out on a big opportunity if you don't go with Mike if you're picking the McCarville name. I that's just my opinion. But that that's fair, but I, I, if my thought was bring Krista along to make sure that the so someone's got to beat the Persingers up there, so that's what Krista would be there for. Yeah, Greg's pretty drunk at that spiel too, so <laughs> I think you. I, I think I like his angle. He wants the coats, like he wants the merch. Yeah, like that's a good I, point. I mean, sure, I like that. I like your point of view as well, but I, I want. I I have been trying so hard to get one of those coats. I need one of those coats. They are the best. Yeah. Your odds of winning go way down if Mike's on the team compared to Crystal <laughs> or Krista. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Fair. That's All a right. good answer, though. I like that. <laughs> All right. Last one. Uh, if you have, if you had a curling walk-up song, uh, what, what would your walk-up song be? So I looked through the Spotify playlist because I, I, I was going to say The Distance by Cake. And then I looked at the playlist, and it's already on there. Oh, okay. uh, all right. So, a good uh, answer. I would. I, I that was uh, that was always my the song that I like said to myself before I like ran races in high school was uh, I was saying that to myself just to get myself into the right rhythm. So for sure, um, I'm gonna go with "High Hopes" by Panic at the Disco. All right, all right. I all right. don't know that one, but I know that song. Yeah. I don't know all the words, but the words that's either, that's but... the tune, right? You, yeah. you are right on it. Nailed right it. On. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been called the songbird of my generation by nobody, but um, yeah. All right. Very good. I, great answer to you. Well, you, uh, why don't you, I assuming you don't have any sponsors, you want to shout out your uh, sub stack again? So if anybody wants to join up, they can. Sure. Uh, so curling in the usa.substack.com. Um, also just check out, uh, the curling news for, uh, articles that will, some of those will come out. I actually do want to give a shout out. Um, I'm not curling with them this year because I'm not in five and under anymore, but the Tuscan curlers. So star Wars, T U S T U S K E N curlers, uh, check them out on Instagram. They are sponsored by Endgame. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Croy for supporting grassroots competitive curling as well. Um, he's done a lot for them. He's been, he was great to work with uh, when I was working with them. So and um, also just supporting Greg, all that grassroots curling podcast casting yeah, in the U.S. For sure, cool, great, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, good luck with your writing. Good luck with your curling season. Um, hopefully, you can get out and spiel a bit, and uh, we'll see you around. All right, man. We'll see. You, well, I'll see. Hopefully, some of you in uh, November for Madtown Mixed Doubles. Oh, oh, for you sure. You gonna play mixed doubles? The club side. Oh, yes. I'm not going to waste anybody's time on the pro side. <laughs> Got, it. Got it. Well, we'll there. be there. Yeah. Joel Joel may not be there because he's... Uh, I got some coverage worked out. So uh, I'll be there pushing the, For push, some. Push the buttons. You're on the ones and twos. Joel will be on the ones and twos. You might have a brand new baby. Joel yeah. might got, be there. Joel might I've, be there. I've Joel thinks coverage. he'll be there. Okay. I'm trying real hard. I got extra coverage coming in. Got yeah. It. All right. Joel's good. N- yeah. good new to this fatherhood stuff. He doesn't quite understand yet. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. But ben, we'll, we'll we will see you. Yep. Yeah, Ben. Thank you for thank you for joining the show. Uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Uh, good curling, buddy. Good curling, guys. Thanks. All right, that's it. Season five, episode two. Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. Big thanks to our sponsors as always. Modus Financial and Endgame. Check them out. ModusCC.com. Endgame. 
Curling.com? Endgame.com. Endgame Curling. Endgame Curling.com. Nailed it. Um, if you want to email the show, do that. Curling Nation at Curling Network.com. I screwed that up earlier. Nailed it right there. If you want us to interview anybody, talk to us, questions about the show, I don't know. Word's good. Word's good. Fire bad. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hopefully you had a good Halloween. Have a good Thanksgiving, because that'll probably... Halloween will be done by the time... No, Halloween... We'll have Halloween before this comes out, right? Or after yeah. this comes out. Yeah. yeah. A couple days. Yeah. yeah. Have a good Halloween. Yeah. Get some candy. Have a good Halloween. Uh, Reese's... We could, Craig's wrong with his top five candy from last year. Go back. Check it out. Um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am super pumped for Halloween because my super kids, up. my kids are both fully invested in Halloween. Dude, you're gonna get so much. Candy I'm gonna this get year. so much. So candy. much. Candy Martin has year. been working on a plan. <laughs> like he's like mapping out the neighborhood. He he, he knows who's getting the full size candy bars. He out. found like his two fastest buddies to go <laughs> trick or treating with. It's gonna be amazing. Nice. All right, longest outro ever. Big thanks to everybody. Uh, we'll be back. Hopefully, Joel might have a kid the next time we have a show. Probably. Who knows? Impossible to know. Probably. All right, Mike. Craig. Not Craig. Good curling, everybody. Out.